And so I just kept on going to the doctor for these weird, weird things. And so finally, um, when my knee just like exploded, I was in so much pain and my, I just had all this fluid on my, in my joint. And, um, the doctor said, you know, I think there might be something else going on. And she automatically offered me, uh, of quite a few different medications. And then she threw on, well, let me also give you an antidepressant because this is really gonna bring you down. And I just thought, man, I don't even, we haven't even just like discovered what this is and here you're offering me these different medications and offering Mm -hmm. me this uh, antidepressant and I'm feeling okay mentally right now. And so that kind of led me to go find a different doctor ultimately. It's Evie here. Welcome to EML Radio, where we are always talking truth. All of those things you need to hear that nobody else is willing to say. All right. You ready to roll? Ready to roll. Awesome. (laughs) First of all, thank you so much for being here. Mm -hmm. Um, I have to tell you that I admire anyone who is willing to be vulnerable enough to share their story, mm-hmm. not always just their triumphs, but their struggles. Absolutely. Um, because our lives are classrooms for other people, mm-hmm. right? and I witness it on a daily basis. So thank you so much for being willing to come in and chat with us. It is an honor. I, awesome. I really have a heart for helping people. So uh, to be able to share my story, just the thought of being able to help even one person, it just brings a lot of joy to my heart. So I am thrilled to share my story. Well, just being here today, I promise you, you are going to change a lot of lives um, and a lot that you will never know, but that has rippling effects. So that's all right. Super excited to talk about this. Yeah. And um, we've known each other. So this is Carly Walker. Um, Carly has been a friend of mine, was previously a client. Her husband was a client for years and years, yeah. always supported me in my business and always enjoyed just getting to know your family. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've known you for a long time, but I really didn't know kind of like your backstory and your intimate story. Yeah. Um, so today Carly's going to be sharing with us her journey of having breast implants, um, subsequently falling into some illnesses, Mm -hmm. and then most recently had explant surgery. And she's gonna kind of walk us through that whole story. And I'm excited because I don't know your whole entire story. Yeah, so you don't come out and say, hi, I'm Carly (laughs) and I have fake boobs. (laughs) You know, it's just not really something that comes up in conversation. And uh, my purpose for getting breast implants, really, I got them when I was 19. And the reason I got them was because all throughout uh, my younger years, I really struggled with body image. Um, I gained weight really fast and I was a pretty chunky kid by the time I was nine I was fully developed oh okay um and I had then lost you know some of that kid chub and my breasts were uh, tubular shaped so a little bit of a deformity Mm -hmm. and um, I just hated the way I looked I would look in the mirror and cry and just be so upset over my body image so I made the decision to get breast implants well you know and let me just tell you I had no idea that that was like even in your childhood Mm -hmm. but and that's amazing because my daughter developed really, really early. Mm -hmm. Um, And obviously she's adopted. And so we don't have any of kind of her, like we have no medical history on her whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Um, And she started to go through puberty when she was nine. Um, When she pretty much like went in and was through puberty very, very quickly. Yeah, that's the Um, same as what happened to me. And we ended up taking her into an endocrinologist and stuff just because we don't have any medical history on her. Mm -hmm. So we had to make sure that she didn't have a pituitary tumor or something that was causing this really accelerated menstruation and going through puberty and Mm -hmm. likewise has really large breasts. Um, And I just like have this always in the back of my mind for her because as her mom, I love her. Mm -hmm. And already I totally can relate to your story because she's very Mm self-conscious about her breasts because they're large and she's a young girl. And I'm, I, I just like pray all that works out for her and help her through it. So you may even be able to give me some insight into helping her. Well, just by (laughs) speaking positively about your own body image, that's going to go a long way with her. You know, I um, had a mother who was never confident in her body image and struggled with eating um, issues and weight gain. She always calls it, you know, yo-yo dieting throughout her whole entire life. And so that was something I was so familiar with all growing up. I mean, I remember probably my first diet when I was 10 years old 
old, just really struggling with that body image um, and those just painful thoughts about myself. And it just got worse as I got older. And you'll kind of hear about that throughout the story. Um, but I think that the best thing you can do is be a positive role model and just always show that your kids that they're beautiful. Food is good for you. Food is not a negative thing. It's not a punishment. <laughs> it's not something that you should reward yourself. It's not something to just survive. You can enjoy food and you should oh, yeah. enjoy food. And that was something, you know, because I grew up. Well, I mean, I mean, you're quite a bit younger than I am. Are you in your 30s? I'm 33. You don't mind me. I'm asking your age. Totally right? don't even mind. Okay, yeah. awesome. <laughs> I figured you wouldn't mind. Yeah, I'm talking about my right. breasts today. Like, I'm, I feel like I'm pretty You're okay open. with telling me how old you are. <laughs> yeah. Um, and 47. I'm, I've been interviewing literally hundreds of women for my book that yeah. I'm writing. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing to me that this is the common theme. And it doesn't really amaze me because now I, like, I reflect back on it. It's like, yes, that's the time that we grew up in, too, mm -hmm. is in the 80s, right? That was the time that, like, aerobics became this big thing. Yeah. And I had a single Mom, I, a single parent mother mm -hmm. um, and she was really into aerobics and all that stuff not to like a unhealthy degree but it was there was just this major focus all the time on like your appearance mm -hmm. um, and being thin enough and being good enough and every woman I talked to I'm telling you a hundred percent not 99 like a hundred percent of people I talked to all say that they grew up with the mindset that you had to be on a diet, mm -hmm. oh, right? yeah. which is kind of beyond today's discussion. But it leads a lot to what would have been some of my opening questions for you mm -hmm. is what was your catalyst for getting breast implants in the first place? Mm -hmm. And I want to like just make it very clear to everybody that this is not to shame or to tell anybody what to do mm -hmm. and to judge whether having breast implants is wrong or right, yeah. right? This is just a matter of really talking honestly mm -hmm. about one, what's the catalyst for it? Mm -hmm. right? And I'll share some of my opinions because I'm yeah. entitled to them. I'll share some of my opinions at the end. Absolutely. Right? Um, so what's the catalyst for wanting them in the first place? Mm -hmm. um, then move on to, okay, when did you start realizing that something wasn't right and that it had to do with your implants mm -hmm. and then you know we'll wrap up with okay what happened once you explanted and then I also want to talk about you know the body image side of once you explant yeah right because mm -hmm. that that all the women that I've spoken to so far just in casual conversations which yeah. has been a lot because I really I want to dive deep into this topic yeah. because I think it's so important because I is. just don't think we're so early mm -hmm. in the understanding of breast implant illness that yeah. nobody really kind of understands it and not very many people are talking about mm -hmm. it so I'm excited about that so that's kind of the way we'll work through this okay um so I'm glad that you started things off with your kind a reason behind it right, right? Mm -hmm. and that's a valid reason right mm -hmm. because it's not all about aesthetics and what do I look like right but the reality is we want to feel confident in our body we do no matter who you are mm -hmm. right that's why I don't buy into this whole body positive like you can be any weight and you're just happy and content that's yeah. bullshit too yeah. right because mm -hmm. no one that weighs 400 pounds just feels 100 percent confident when they walk in a room and yeah. if you tell me you do or send me hate mail I don't care because you're that's bullshit yeah you don't not right. to mention the health effects of it yeah right? absolutely I would totally agree with that so the understanding oh, I mean I I get it as a female wanting to be comfortable mm -hmm. in your body. Yeah. Like. Yeah. And people have often asked me, well, do you wish you would have never gotten breast implants? And I say, absolutely not. I am actually really glad that I got them because mm -hmm. now I can actually feel confident in my own skin because I know that those implants did not define me. They didn't make me the person that I am. And by taking them out, I feel so much more free. I feel because before I felt like a little fakey fake, like I'm preaching, hey, I'm this oh. girl who I want to be open and honest and um, I want to be a role model for other people because I work with children so it's important to me to be a role model to those young girls um, and you know help them with their body image and I felt like a, a liar because uh -huh. I I wasn't being true to myself but once I had those taken out I'm like man you know what I actually am confident in my own skin I am not defined by my body shape or having large breasts or a deformity uh, I'm so much more than that and uh -huh. so I don't regret having my breast implants put in and I certainly don't regret having them taken out awesome mm -hmm. and I mean I commend you in that like that's uh, that is coming full circle in your journey absolutely really, right? yeah because 
like that's not easy to do, Mm -hmm. right? Being comfortable in who you are and then being willing enough to be authentic Mm -hmm. about all the flaws, all the struggles, Mm -hmm. right? And then not regretting anything, yeah, right? Because Mm -hmm. sometimes you can get through it, but then you're like, oh, I have all these regrets. Yeah. But you know my take on that. It's like anytime mm-hmm. you're spending today regretting all the things that didn't go so, like, quote, unquote, as planned, mm-hmm. you're just wasting your current life. Absolutely. Because right? I firmly believe that everything we go through teaches us something mm-hmm. if we are self-aware enough and if we're willing to be vulnerable enough to mm-hmm. take the lesson and work forward from it. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yes. So let me backtrack to you got them when you were 19. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and was this something that like your mom or parents were like behind, oh, no, like in support of us? No, my mom was so against it. So okay. I was living on my own. So, I mean, really, I, I told my mom it was going to happen, um, but I was single, um, just kind of dating around and just free to do what I wanted at Got 19. It. I, you know, was financially responsible. And so I did tell her and she did try to talk me out of it. it. Um, she just said, yeah, I talked to your aunt who has breast implants and she says, work your, you know, pec muscles and this and that. And my mom had never seen my breast. She wasn't really, we're not like that kind of an open family. Sure. So I didn't feel like um, she understood or anybody could understand my reasoning for it because I wasn't wanting to get huge double D breasts to look any certain way. I just wanted to fill out basically the tube sock that I had. I mean, (laughs) and to to look normal. Well, and I I told you this when we talked before the interview was like, I mean, I knew you for years and trained you and everything else. And it's like, I didn't even know that you had breast implants. Right, right. Not that I was staring at your boobs, but I was like, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of times where you can, it's very evident when someone has implants. So then when you came out, you know, saying that you were struggling with some autoimmune stuff and then you ended up with explant surgery and I saw that you know just online and kind yeah. of talking with you mm-hmm. I had no idea that you even had implants in the first place mm-hmm. yep. yeah so my goal it. was to have you know natural looking breasts and I wanted to be able to breastfeed my children mm-hmm. um, so when I had them put in I made sure I said hey if I'm doing this am I going to be able to breastfeed is this going to look Got normal um, there's a lot of research that goes into implants and breastfeeding but that's also another topic, topic. <laughs> yeah. yeah so um I'm so sorry. you you did them on your own. Parents weren't involved. Parents were 19. not involved. Okay. Yeah. Um, when you – now, I mean, this has been a while, right? But I just want to know, once you had the surgery, did you have a sense of feeling – better and more confident Mm -hmm. within your body you know I it's interesting because I was dating around at the time so the person I was dating had seen my before and after results and I never wanted um I still never was comfortable with my shirt off I was never comfortable with anybody feeling you know my chest or uh, never in my whole life have I been just because of how just self-conscious I was in my mind for all those years so um it really didn't change anything for me interestingly Uh, yeah yeah I mean, it, it made me feel a little bit better that I didn't feel as deformed, but it's still kind of like, oh, I just still don't like this. This is not not something I was necessarily proud of. So interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think, I mean, this is obviously just my opinion. So I haven't had implants. I did have a breast lift mm-hmm. because I had really large boobs when I, like from at eighth grade, all of a sudden, oh, seventh grade, I just like all of a sudden turned into like a woman overnight, mm-hmm. <laughs> truly. And it was not good, right? Yeah. I was like, I was definitely not ready to have that kind of like figure and large breasts and everything mm-hmm. else at such a young age. But then, you know, I was pregnant with my daughter. She passed away. Mm-hmm. So I still obviously got my breast milk. I mean, my all my milk in and everything else right. and then not being able to breastfeed. Mm-hmm. So, and then they, I lost a lot of weight after that. Mm-hmm. And so it was like my, my breasts were just again, like really flat pancake. Like I really wasn't confident mm-hmm. in a swimming suit. I never understood the whole breast implant thing because I grew up with the opposite problem. I had really large boobs and small. So I was like buying, you know, size 16 tops and mm-hmm. little bottoms. So it's like, I was like, why would you want your boobs to be bigger? Because I knew yeah. from personal experience that they're a pain in the ass, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. I was self-conscious because they were big, <laughs> mm-hmm. but anyway, so I did back when I was, it was when we first moved to Coeur d'Alene. So it was about 16 years ago. So I'd have been in my early thirties. Yeah. Right? That's kind of seems to be the time frame too. I want to get into that Mm -hmm. um but in my early 30s I had a reduction Mm -hmm. and a lift at the same time Mm -hmm. and I was tempted I can remember at that time I was tempted to have an implant put in Mm -hmm. but I've always even before I was really into health focused and definitely not in the health industry but I always had this like 
kind of apprehension about putting something foreign into my body. Yeah. Like I was pregnant with my daughter and I didn't even paint my fingernails. Like I was, like I always just had that and I don't know, it wasn't because I was educated in it. I just innately had something where I didn't want to put something in foreign in my body. Yeah. Um, And now looking back, I'm very glad I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And my husband really wasn't supportive of it either. He was like, he's in the medical field and he was like, yeah, I just, I think that there's health implications there that Mm -hmm. we just don't quite fully understand yet. Yeah. So anyway, I do understand the concept of like wanting to look good in your body. Yeah. And I mean, I had a breast lift and went through, you know, a major surgery. That's a really major surgery. It is. Um, But ultimately, I didn't have the implants done. But I get it. And I totally empathize with women that like you want to feel comfortable and having breasts that like suppose they look good like whatever that is right what, yeah what <laughs> whatever is that? that is right <laughs> yeah. is a part of it yeah. so I get it yeah, yeah absolutely so tell me when so that was at 19 when did you when did you start having any kind of health issues not necessarily that you knew that they were related to your yeah. implants but when did you start to experience right. health issues it's so hard to say um because I really over the years struggled a lot with um still with body image and still just yo-yo dieting and really terrible restrictions I put on myself so I can't really say when it happened for sure but mm-hmm. how, my first symptom that was noticeable was I lost my hair and oh. uh, not all of my hair but uh, my hair was uh, extreme hair loss um and and i always had achy joints always when, my like hands. when was this in your 20s yeah in my early 20s oh, i would okay. say yeah so i always had achy really achy wrists achy knees and i always just thought it was because of the work that i did i worked in a bakery on cement floors and worked hard work i you know did um hard exercising i even ran a marathon at one point mm-hmm. so it's hard on my body so i just attributed it to that and all always thought I was just you know hard on my body so my body hurts Got it. and I didn't really realize that that wasn't normal to yeah, feel and I think that so way. many I mean not, not even related to breast implants whatsoever but so many people think that feeling kind of cruddy yeah. or like having achy knees or your hips always hurt or your low back hurts mm-hmm. is somehow normal and mm-hmm. like we've accepted that like that's normal and it's completely not it normal, is not right normal. like your body doesn't just exist to feel like in chronic pain right, right? if but your body is in chronic pain it is trying wrong. to tell you something <laughs> it's like yeah. uh carly something's wrong right. here and now that yeah. i'm so um in tune with my body if i feel like some of those certain pains i can tr- kind of trace back what the reason is it's so oh. interesting Interesting. Once you're really intuitive with your body, how you can really un- begin to understand the implications of these aches and pains, and you know why they're happening. Um, so that kind of occurred in my early 20s, okay. and then really, but every you still thing, were not understanding like what any of this was. Had associated no idea. With. Right. Yeah. Just just knew that I I just thought it was everyday life that I just wasn't feeling good. But I also kind of thought in the back of my mind, I'm really too young to kind of be feeling this way. In my early 20s, right. I can't imagine what I'm going to be feeling like when I'm you know 50, 60 couldn't imagine right uh, because I just was in that kind of pain um so really this all happened last February everything kind of came to a head I had experienced the prior summer I had um, a shoulder injury and an elbow my elbow was just killing me um epichondrolitis I believe it is basically a severe tennis elbow got it and it was over a year that I really couldn't I couldn't even pick up a coffee cup with my right hand because it was just my elbow killed me and then I got um fluid on my left knee And so I just kept on going to the doctor for these weird, weird things. And so finally, um, when my knee just like exploded, I was in so much pain and my, I just had all this fluid on my, in my joint. And, um, the doctor said, you know, I think there might be something else going on. And she automatically offered me, uh, a, quite a few different medications and then she threw on well let me also give you an antidepressant because it's really going to bring you down and I just thought man I don't even we haven't even just dis- like discovered what this is and here you're offering me these different medications and offering mm-hmm. me this uh, antidepressant and I'm feeling okay mentally right now and so that kind of led me to go find a different doctor ultimately Got but it. she had a feeling something was wrong so she also scheduled me a rheumatologist appointment at that time okay. um, and this is definitely a deep rabbit hole but this is really good discussion around why a lot of things in Western medicine aren't working for mm-hmm. people, right? Like mm-hmm. 
I'm married to a Western medicine doctor, so believe me, like I get it. But yeah. he's a Western medicine doctor that has a very specific purpose when people are very, very ill. Yeah. Right? So mm-hmm. like you don't want to see him because if you see him, chances are you're probably not living much longer. Mm-hmm. Right? But from a general health standpoint, mm-hmm. we have it all wrong. Yeah. Because people are coming in like you, where you mm-hmm. have all of these different things that mm-hmm. are just popping up. Right. Mm -hmm. But instead of really being able to dig into, well, why is this happening? Mm -hmm. Right. Like, why do you have fluid on your wrist? Why is your your knee exploding? Yeah. Right. Like, why is your shoulder aching you? We're not looking at any of those things. Mm -hmm. We're just looking at a symptom and then saying, here's a medication to tell your body to shut up. Don't hurt because we don't want to have to deal with what's really causing it. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is definitely, like I said, a big wormhole. We don't even have time to go into it today. But but it's a serious issue. So mm-hmm. people, I, the takeaway in this conversation for people is that if you're going to a doctor and the doctor is simply just wanting to give you a medication for either pain or depression or somehow like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, whatever it is, mm-hmm. if the only solution is here, take this medication, you really need to think about if you just want to keep on adding medications to your life right. or if you eventually want to actually find out what's wrong mm-hmm. and solve the problem so that you can be free of medications. And that's exactly where I was at. That's why I said, I need to see a different doctor because this is literally every time something came up, it was just like a Band-Aid. Like, here, go to physical therapy and here's some more um, – some like 800 milligram ibuprofen take this twice a day and then that in turn wrecked my stomach so that caused a whole nother (laughs) issue so finally I decided to go see a different doctor and I found a lovely doctor here in Coeur d'Alene who specializes in autoimmune issues because I had a feeling something Mm -hmm. was going on I have other families with auto or other members in my family who have autoimmune issues and it runs in families genetics so Mm -hmm. I thought man this is a sign so I started seeing this new uh she's a nurse practitioner in town and she actually um specializes in kind of just like treating the gut she really focuses Mm -hmm. on the gut first and kind of getting all that in line before figuring out all the other symptoms and it was her who recommended having my breast implants looked at she was the one who said that my prior doctor never said anything but that was the first appointment she said have you know I see on your medical history you had breast implants have you ever thought that that might be causing your issues and I said gosh, I'd never thought about that. Mm -hmm. Because when I got them in, they never warned me that there were any health implications for getting implants. There was no conversation around that. Um, So that kind of got me thinking, man, maybe I do need to look at these breast implants. And so I started researching and digging and um, just found so much information on breast implant illness and all the different things that could have been going on. And I'm looking at this list of symptoms saying, oh my gosh, this is all of this is me. This is exactly how I'm feeling. Got it. Yeah, so it was all because of going to that kind of that like naturopath type doctor. Yep. She doesn't labor yep. herself as that, but that is what she is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I mean, I I think that there's a there's a strong purpose and place for both Western and Eastern medicine yes. and naturopathic and functional medicine. Yes. The way I describe it, the easiest terms is look into functional medicine mm-hmm. and natural remedies mm-hmm. as preventative, right? Mm-hmm. And so that you take care of yourself. Yeah. If you have gotten to the point where you are seeing Western medicine doctors, it's because shit has gone wrong. Right. right? Yes. Right? So that's not going to be your health care. That's sick care. Mm-hmm. So Western medicine is sick care. Eastern medicine, functional or naturopathic medicine is wellness. I love that. Right? Mm-hmm. It is. It's just trying to promote mm-hmm. optimal wellness. Yeah. But our Western medical system is based on treating illnesses. Mm-hmm. And that has a purpose. I want people to understand. Like, it has a purpose. Because mm-hmm. if you're sick, you want those guys. I'm telling you. Yes, You're you going to need them. Yeah. Oh, right? absolutely. Because they can truly save your life. Yeah. But if you're going to your Western medicine doctor for wellness mm-hmm. and getting advice on nutrition or how to heal your gut or how to create just overall wellness in your life, mm-hmm. they're not the people to do it. That's right. not what they're trained in. Yeah, right? absolutely. Like, I teach my husband about nutrition. Mm-hmm. He's a doctor. Like, a high-level high level physician yeah. i teach him about nutrition and mm-hmm. lifestyle and balance and wellness yeah. right mm-hmm. in hopes that i never actually need him <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm glad that we got to that. So 
Yeah. This gal kind of gave you some tools to then go research and do a be your own advocate. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Be my own advocate. Yep. Um, so I found um, Nicole's Breast Implant Awareness and Healing Group on Facebook. And that that group is absolutely amazing. It um, led me to pretty much all of the different things that I needed to do my research. You know, um, peer-reviewed articles on this. There okay. aren't What was many. it called? It's Nicole, uh, Nicole's Breast Implant Awareness and Healing Group or something along those lines. Okay. I've changed the name since that. But if you... You, even if you Google Nicole's breast implant awareness or healing, it will come up and you'll find it. Okay. And there's so many. I mean, there's over a hundred thousand ladies in that group, and so many explants. Um, and their advice is really good, and just they really did provide kind of the groundwork for my research, which led me to believe that I did have breast implant illness. Um, when I went in there, I knew that my ANA levels, which are often what they test to find out if you have autoimmune disease, those were highly elevated. Okay. So because of that, the rheumatologist, when I ended up going to see him, he said, you know, I think that you have lupus. It sounds like you have lupus. You have. I remember that when that had come up with you and you were like, I think I'm, I've been diagnosed with lupus. Yeah. So yeah. was that not really? Well, uh, the jury is still out. Okay. It hasn't even been a year since my surgery. And, you know, they say it can take half as long to heal your body as you had implants. I had implants for like 10 or 11 years. Oh, wow. So okay. it could take quite some time. But what I can say is my ANA levels are now normal which is fascinating to me. Yeah. So um, I, I don't tell people I have lupus anymore. When that was the first diagnosis, I kind of, I had a name to associate with how sure. I was feeling. Well, because we want answers, we right? You want, want something to attach that to. I don't want to just like chronically feel like shit and I have no idea. Right. Right. And then someone just says, well, you have fibromyalgia. And so like, yeah. see you later. Right. right? Here's an antidepressant. Yeah. Right? I get it. We, we want something to to attach it to absolutely. and an explanation behind it because there's nothing more frustrating than being sick or not feeling well mm -hmm. and having absolutely no idea why. Yeah, yeah, it is really hard. And with autoimmune stuff, oftentimes you don't get answers. For yep. a really long time, it's hard to get answers. So I kind of clung to that. Um, but then I decided, well, I actually don't think I have that. A medical doctor did say I did. So like I said, sure. the jury is out. Um, but I, I say now I have autoimmune issues. Right. We know there's some things that aren't right. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I, there's no need to define that or label it for me personally because I'm doing everything I can and everything right. So for me, I just, I just really don't think that a label is important. I've done everything that I possibly can to promote health and wellness, and I am healing. I've, I've found just after having my breast implants, the difference between having them out in like 12 hours later, uh, there can be a photo that we'll put in here, yeah. but the difference in the inflammation in my body within like 12 hours was night and day. It you sent me that picture crazy. right after your surgery. I think yes. that you, I don't even, you have just gotten home from your surgery and yeah. sent me that picture. Yeah. And I shared it with a couple of my clients, obviously asked you if I could, um, but I shared it with a couple of people because I've had quite a few other women that reached out to me mm -hmm. expressing the fact they were going, they were on a waiting list to get their explant surgery done, Yeah, um, which is worth saying, you know, it's the number one cosmetic mm -hmm. well they're still calling it cosmetic right but it's the number one cosmetic related surgery in the nation right mm -hmm. now now like you can't ignore that yeah. that makes me excited yeah, right it, it kind does. of makes me realize that people are connecting the dots and mm -hmm. becoming more educated I think we have a long way to go still um but those pictures mm -hmm. it was like clear in your face and you would think normally like after having a surgery that you would be even puffier and more swollen and yeah. look worn out mm -hmm. you would have thought the pictures were flip-flopped yeah your pre-surgery <laughs> picture you would have thought was the post-surgery picture yeah I mean my skin just the clarity my skin before was so red I had so much skin irritation just dealing with like a lot of acne issues and I mean just it was immediate the bags the dark bags under my eyes were gone um, my eyes were even yellow ish you know mm -hmm. yellow tint before surgery and they were so clear and I just remember looking in the mirror and being like oh man this is what I'm supposed to look like all these years I just felt like it was like an imposter and so it was so freeing to just be genuinely myself well, and you just light up when you say it, right? Yeah, it, like makes it feels me good. So happy. <laughs> yeah. It feels really, really good. Yeah. Um, so let me ask you, what things are you doing when you say that you're improving your overall wellness now? Mm -hmm. Like kind of lay out for us what you do now mm -hmm. um, that maybe you weren't doing before mm -hmm. or that you were still doing before, but you really weren't seeing much 
improvements in your health from it because the implants were making you sick. Right. So I think from a a health standpoint, it's important to mention that everybody is so different. So what what I do and what works for me is um, thoroughly discussed with my doctor. So this is, you know, we've worked through this. We've been um, working on this for almost a year. Well, it has been a year now because we're in February. So we've been working on this health for a year. So the main things that we started with were stress management. So she tested my cortisol levels and my hormones. I was one of the first things that she did. And my thyroid wasn't functioning properly, yeah. which is which common. Is, with it's very common. And yeah. Just it's common, common with everybody. in general now. I can't tell you even in coaching over a 12 year period, I would probably say at least upwards of 70, if not 80% of women that I worked with had thyroid issues. Mm-hmm. Right? And there's lots of causes and stuff behind that that we won't get into. But yeah, yeah it's very, very common to right. have low, low thyroid function. Yeah. And so kind of cortisol often goes hand in hand it with does. that because it mm-hmm. goes with your hormones. So we started to um, take some herbal supplements that help with cortisol. And when they tested your cortisol, was it elevated oh. or had you gotten on the other side? Because I I went through years of elevated cortisol, but mm-hmm. then burned my adrenals out. And I was on the other end of that where now my body couldn't produce any cortisol mm-hmm. at all because it was like you've been living in in fight or flight for so long yeah. apparently you like this we're worn out so mm-hmm. I couldn't even produce cortisol mm-hmm. hence like I gained a lot of weight over the last couple of years and mm-hmm. like I'm getting all that back in check yeah. but I was wondering where you were at in the cortisol yeah world. so it kind of like comes in a chart yeah. um, and it shows you you take it in the morning and you know every couple of yep. hours throughout the whole day my morning when I first woke up the cortisol was so high it wasn't even on the table anymore oh god you it. couldn't even and see it just so like for listeners so they understand like you know it should peak about mm, an hour or two after waking right? right but it shouldn't be so high that you're like running from mammoths exactly right, right upon the right. moment I opened my eyes because that's when I did the test Got was it. first thing so the, those cortisol all levels were just absolutely crazy. So a lot of that has to do with stress management. Yeah. So we began stress management. I did um, some meditation, mm. um, breathing the eight seconds in and then hold it for yeah. four seconds and then eight seconds out and practice that five minutes. I try to do it twice a day. Um, journaling has really helped with my stress management, gratitude, working on all of these these are not necessarily people wouldn't think they're health type related things, but they are. They make a huge difference and an overall impact. They are what health is, right? Mm-hmm. That's how you create health, or I like to call it optimal wellness. Because yeah. health, really, by definition, I've already recorded a podcast on this, is really just the absence of disease. Mm-hmm. So I think for all of us, we want more than just being absent from disease, yeah. right? We want optimal wellness. Yeah. And the things you're describing are how you do it, mm-hmm. right? The trouble is, a lot of people don't want to take the time mm-hmm. and don't have the patience to mm-hmm. do the work. Yeah, and I can understand that. When I first it's started work. doing it, I thought, this is ridiculous. This is not going to make me feel better. Bre- breathing is n- going to do nothing for me. Let mm. me tell you that I, I have just completely done just a flipped in my health I can't believe how much better I feel in fact I didn't realize how sick I actually was until now I feel so great and so normal that when I have a bad day I'm like man I can't believe I was living in this for years it's unbelievable to think that I was dealing with that pain no wonder I was so cranky and tired (laughs) and just not happy in my life how could I be because I was miserable but I just I really didn't understand how bad it was until now I'm feeling so great it's it's really eye opening, um, so the stress management was huge, and then we did a Nutra eval, so oh, tested nice. all of my vitamins, all oh, of my okay. minerals, and um, it's an expensive test, but it was really worth it. It showed that my vitamin, um, all my B vitamins were dangerously low, mm-hmm. so that is really doesn't help with your energy uh, levels, absolutely, and your mental health. Yep. So we kind of um, were able to target exactly what I needed. So I got on about 10, 10 or 12 different supplements. Okay. Um, and they, she put me on also the only actual medication that I'm taking is a low dose naltrexone, mm-hmm. which um, has a lot of uh, interesting interesting science behind it for helping people with autoimmune disease. Oh, gotcha. It's used to treat allergies oftentimes or actually oh. people who are um, alcoholics. It's it's helps to deal with that. It kind of, it works with the brain receptors, oh. but it's like the lowest dose. Like a normal dose is 150 milligrams. She had it on like three milligrams. Oh, gotcha. So just the teeniest, tiniest okay. dose, but it kind of tricks your brain receptors into uh, releasing all of your hormones at different times. It's oh. fascinating science okay. behind it, but that's the okay. only medication that I'm on, which is interesting considering how many medications that the other doctor had wanted to put me on initially. Yep. Yep. 
Um, okay, so when you, I want to switch gears just a second and ask you when you had your breast implants tested or mm-hmm. looked at, yeah. was there any kind of rupture or leaking or something mm-hmm. that like visually through scanning or anything else could be found? No, there wasn't. So they okay. were uh, saline implants. Okay. So that, yeah, they, they looked a hundred percent perfect. See, cause I think that's an, that's really something I want to hammer home to people is mm-hmm. that you do not have to have a ruptured implant, mm-hmm. right? Or old school silicone implants for your implants to cause a problem. Yeah, because they're causing a, an inflammatory response in your body, yes. and your body because it's simply a foreign object. A in foreign your body. object, right. exactly. So my body was constantly attacking my uh, breast implants, and so it was just putting my immune system into hyperdrive. Got it. So even though there was no issues, and certainly some people do have issues, you know, with ruptures, leaks, sure, or even sure. there's been moldy implants. Um, yeah, I, I know somebody locally who yeah. had moldy implants taken yeah. out. And, that was causing like a systemic systemic like fungal infection yeah right? yes yeah, so we know we the same person we yeah do. we definitely do um yeah so I, I literally know at least a dozen women like like firsthand personally close into my intimate circle yeah that are explanting or have had explant surgery mm-hmm. and are feeling 100 percent better gosh right? isn't that amazing yeah but I just wanted to pause there and make sure that people realize that you don't have because a lot of women will say well mine are completely fine like mm-hmm. may don't they may not feel good right I can almost look at them and go like, yeah, things just don't look great in your world. You're constantly tired. You constantly have headaches. You have skin issues. You're seeing the dermatologist all the time, Mm -hmm. right? Or you're depressed, all these other factors. But my breast implants haven't ruptured, so there's nothing wrong with my breast implants. Yeah. So I think it's just really important for people to take away from our talk today that your breast implants don't have to rupture. Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you now, as far as once you had them removed – now, you said that you really didn't have some kind of, like, major boost in your self-confidence when you got them. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, you didn't necessarily – it didn't solve all of your, like, negative body no. image associations or anything else, which mm-hmm. I think is very is very true for a lot of people, right, that they think that one improvement in one part of their body is going to solve all the things. And usually it's that if you are so focused on one area of your body being flawed, mm-hmm. fixing that – isn't the answer because you're just going to focus that attention on something else. Yeah. Well, and let's look right. inside to find our right. happiness. Yeah. We don't need yeah. to focus on the outside. So there, there definitely wasn't, but there was a huge confidence booster when I had them taken out. Yeah. That's what I want you to tell me. Like, how yeah. did you feel? Okay. Cause I've talked to some women that said it was really hard. Like all of us, like I was yeah. associated with my, my body image was that I was voluptuous and I had these great boobs and I would wear low cut dresses and it made me feel good. Yeah. So right. I was never that person Got though. It. I okay. never really had, I didn't, I don't think I ever really flaunted them or anything because they were so natural looking. Yeah. Um, but I, being so athletic, they sure did get in the way for a lot of years and were irritating. And over yep. time after breastfeeding, I breastfed my first son for over two years and I breastfed my second little guy only for six months. Okay. Uh, he, was, he wasn't into it, which is so rude. <laughs> <laughs> but so I had a lot of breastfeeding under my belt. So even they had started to sag and kind of look how they looked before I had implants even Got put it. in. So towards the end, I just really was dissatisfied with how everything was looking. Um, and so when I had, and I didn't have teeny boobs before when I was young, sure. you know, when I had my implants, they were bigger than they are now. Um, but it was so freeing to just kind of be like flat chested and to not have to worry about it. I had never been able to experience not having to worry about wearing a bra or to just get, just go to the gym and work out without like getting heavy duty sports bra on and some things were painful to do. Um, And so just, just being myself, being flat chested and, and athletic, I felt like my body now matched exactly how I felt inside. I, I like felt it. like an ath- athletic, confident person, and I felt like I look like that on the outside now, too. Yeah. It, it just looks like how it always should have been. And you do. I mean, like, I hadn't seen you face-to-face for quite some time. Yeah. And, like, when you walked in the door... I was like, oh my goodness, girl, you look so good. Yeah, everybody right? thinks, everyone asked me, did yeah. you lose a bunch of weight or You're what's going glowing. on with you? You're just glowing. You just and seem, like, you know, it just like you just seem 
at peace and yeah. it shows in your mm-hmm. exterior. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been really life changing for me, and I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to share that and talk about it yeah. because it, it was scary. The fir- the moment that my doctor mentioned having my breast implants out, mm-hmm. I just burst into tears and I said, "My husband, I've been with him for 12 years. He's never even seen me with different." breasts oh yeah that was hard for me to imagine just like wow my husband's never seen me with anything different is he gonna still think I'm beautiful when I'm flat chested Uh and those those are hard things to think about really hard things I'm sure and I went home and of course my husband's amazing he's like um I just want you to be healthy and happy (laughs) I don't care and I actually think he prefers it this way too you know it's such a difference because before I would not let myself be you know looked at without a shirt on and now I'm like oh I'm so confident in my own skin I feel just fine about it better than I've ever felt my whole life and my body's you know by I guess uh the standards of the world my body doesn't look perfect. I before I probably had a quote unquote perfect body at mm-hmm. one time in my life. I probably did when I was crazy unhappy, crazy unhappy, abusing mm-hmm. my body, dieting like crazy, running 15 miles a day in the gym for 3 hours a day, had nice big boobs. Now I have stretch marks all over my stomach from having children, <laughs> all this extra skin, boobs that are flatter than pancakes. We well, have I a body feel, that reflects your life. Yeah, I couldn't right? feel better about my body. I yeah. am so proud of it. And my body's just like a roadmap of what, yeah, what my life has been over the yeah. last, you know, decade. And um, I'm just so grateful that somebody kind of opened my eyes to the fact that, hey, there is something different out there. It's scary. It's scary to take out your breast implant. Some Mm-hmm. you've known for over and 10 a major years. surgery right and a major surgery can you before yeah. we wrap everything up can you just kind of give us an idea as far as what that's that whole process looked like yeah. finding a doctor right because from what I know it, it's really difficult to find doctors that are actually doing this surgery yeah. and qualified to do it right, right? so the qualified the is the key yeah. aspect to that Got because it. you want to do it's called an in-block surgery where they take out the whole capsule that surrounds the breast implant to make sure that if there is a rupture or leak or contamination that it's not going to get into the rest of your body Got so it. you really need a microsurgeon okay um, and on that Nicole's breast implant healing group that I was talking about or if you google breast implant illness healing Mm -hmm. you'll find a list of doctors that are vetted and it's not long out of the whole United States it's a short list but you can almost find somebody in every state or close enough to you there's a microsurgeon in Spokane who's great okay um so it is possible but you definitely want to find the right person you don't want to go call the person who put your implants in because I can almost guarantee you that's not going to be the right choice yeah (laughs) I would guarantee that and just um for everybody listening there's a resource a good friend of mine um just started a nonprofit organization she's Mm -hmm. gone through this whole journey I'm interviewing her in a couple of weeks here um she started a nonprofit that's called the heal is real oh cool um so definitely visit that as well and direct people to that because I can tell you it's an unbelievably valuable resource and Mm -hmm. she's um, she just came onto the scene just this year with Mm -hmm. this new um, organization but it's phenomenal I stand behind it 100% so the heal is real is also an option for people to go to get educated share stories great yeah I don't think you can have enough education and there isn't a lot of education out there so any good quality source is great yeah because even just the the times that I share things on my social media just letting people know like get informed before you make these decisions Um, I get a lot of outreach from people Mm -hmm. Um, so I can't thank you enough for being on here today and sharing your story like it takes a lot of courage to do that yeah and I really appreciate it I have to tell you that you look like a million bucks. <laughs> Thank you. Right? Really. Um, you just have the best energy. It's not all about the way you look. It's just your energy is so good. Like, it's contagious. Thank and you. that's going to make a difference in the world. Thank yep. you so much. I appreciate yep. that. And without sounding condescending, it's like I'm super proud of you mm. because, like, what you're doing isn't isn't an easy thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but it'll help These change. tears welling up. <laughs> yeah. You're so sweet. Um, well, it's real, though. That yeah. really is. Right? Like, um, mm-hmm. most people, we just don't realize that most most people aren't willing to share a struggle. Mm -hmm. Um, And as long as people aren't willing to share their struggles, then you don't have the opportunity to change or help anybody else in the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I like to leave every show with a truth. Mm -hmm. Um, So my truth for everybody listening today is that if you want to be fully well, have optimal wellness from the inside all the way through the outside, 
you need to ask yourselves if you're really being honest, Mm -hmm. if you're really being honest with yourself that you're optimally well if you have the necessity to chronically focus on some exterior part of your body. Mm. Right? Yeah. That's not for me to judge. It's just a question for people out there. Mm-hmm. If you need a ton of plastic surgery, when is that ever going to end? And fixing all of these flaws, so called flaws on our body, if it really is going to get you to optimal wellness. Yeah. Right? A good question for people to ask themselves. Smart. Got it. Mm-hmm. Thank right. you so much. Eve. You got it. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it. Thanks. Right. See you soon. Bye. Bye.